Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first episode of this talk show for my next fantasy tournament. I run the Instagram account in the green square, and appearing on here is my buddy Pori Nog, who runs the Instagram account BattleBot Collector. How are you doing, Pori? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Not too bad. So I want to explain two things before we get to the start of this talk show. The first thing is, if you haven't seen the first episode of BattleBot Season 5, which was released last Thursday, there will probably be some spoilers here, so maybe avoid this talk show episode for a while yeah. if you don't want spoilers. The second the, thing... Um, the episode is on Discovery as well. Like It's up for free on the Discovery website, so they can watch it for free right now. Yep, it is on Discovery Go Free, and they recently released it on Am Amazon Prime and YouTube as well, if you want another way of yeah. accessing the, possible, the whole season. Yeah, I bought it on YouTube. So the second thing I want to talk about is I'm going to briefly explain this tournament. So there are 128 competitors, a lot of them. A majority of them are BattleBots Season 5 contenders that we will be seeing this season. As you can see on here, there's a few that appeared on the first fight card. Others happen to be competitors that fought in past few seasons and didn't make it or maybe were retired designs. Others are Robot Wars competitors. We see a few there. And some others, we see a few BattleBots Comedy Central competitors. If you want to see exactly who is competing in this tournament, I posted a reasonably accurate list. There were a few swaps recently, but you can find the list on my Instagram account. So follow in the green square for this. And so every competitor gets eight total fights. And every time they win, they get a certain number of points based off of who they beat. And then ev all 128 competitors for the postseason will be thrown in a 128 competitor bracket and will be ranked based off first off their point total and second based off their rank. All right. So I believe that is a pretty good description of this. I plan on releasing this uh, fight. I plan on releasing this fight card this Wednesday. So be sure to follow my Instagram account as there will be polls if you would like to vote on that. I will also be posting this in the BattleBots Facebook group too if you would like to see it through there. So now let's get to the fight card. And I gotta see, I, the first place my eyes look is that main event, Carbide and Minotaur, a major Robot Wars and BattleBots face-off. If there is any Robot Wars vs. BattleBots face-off, I would want to see it is this one right here. Carbide and Minotaur would be an awesome fight. I would love to see that one. So we'll get to that one at the end. So basically the purpose of this talk show is just going to be any guest and I will talk about the two competitors they're about to fight. We'll go through the list one by one and end it with the main event. We'll put all fights to a vote. Since there's only two of us here for this talk show episode, if, if a fight happens to be split, it'll be sent right to the comments. Basically, you just comment who you think would win that fight, and that'll be the winning vote. So now let's get to the leadoff fight in this fight card, which will be Red Devil and Railgun Max. Would you like to say something about this, Pori? Ooh, I am, that would be a really fun fight. Um, Railgun Max was probably my favorite robot last season that wasn't Ribot, so I definitely would love to see them make a comeback. And Red Devil is just like, it's a work of art. I mean, let's be real here. I mean, it's a beautiful robot and it's well-driven. So it's definitely a fight that would be really cool to see in person. Agreed. I bet Red Devil, if they fought Railgun Max, they would probably go with their plow configuration for some extra defense. And yeah, I got to agree with yeah. you on that. Red Devil and Railgun Max both showed major potential in the seasons they competed in. Sadly, we weren't able to see either of them as both of them were looking to come to BattleBots this season, but COVID kind of prevented that yeah. from happening. So one big problem I could see out of Red Devil is those exposed treads. We know Railgun Max mm -hmm. is going to try to take advantage of those when they get their weapon up to speed, kind of like what they were doing against free shipping, where they were trying to go for their mm -hmm. exposed wheels. A problem I could see from Railgun Max, while that spinner is incredibly powerful, 
they did have a few fights last season where that spinner wasn't so reliable. Of mm-hmm. course, yeah, though. Yeah, it's like died pretty fast. Yeah. I think it was one who the end of the free shipping fight and their three-way rumble, oh, it had some problems. But still, that thing is – died in a, It died in the shell shock fight too, I believe. Oh, yeah, they like caught five it, it at the end it. of the fight, I believe. Yeah. But either way, though, Railgun Max is a powerful egg beater, and I imagine that thing – that thing was a very destructive weapon last season. Mm-hmm. All right. So you got anything you want to say about this or should we quick put this to a vote? Uh, I feel like the way the fight would probably wind up going is that Railgun Max would probably wail on Red Devil for like a minute and maybe even like break one of his tre- treads, maybe like knock a tread pod loose. But I feel like after that minute, its weapon would die and it would just be like, it would be kind of like, um, Red Devil versus Monsoon, where like the weapons are just dead and they're just kind of like pushing each other. Yeah, push battle. Like, I feel like that's where the fight would go. But yeah, that I think that's my prediction on how it would go. I completely agree with that. So now let's put this to a vote. My vote will be probably Railgun Max. I think Railgun Max will win it in a judge's decision, as Red Devil has the durability e to mm-hmm. go to full three minutes. I agree. I agree. I feel like that's the direction it would definitely go in. Yeah. All right. So let's get to the second fight of this fight card, which is Sidewinder and Thor. Now, as we've seen Thor in Robot Wars done quite well. Now, as they made the grand final episode in series eight and managed to get the top Mm -hmm. four and then came up just short in series nine and 10 of making the grand final episode. Their opponent is Sidewinder, whom we saw in BattleBots last season. We saw them tear apart P1, but then things did not go as well for them when they fought Scorpios. Yeah. Any thoughts on this fight? Um, I feel like the thing with Sidewinder is, like, I'm actually really bummed because I heard a rumor that apparently they were supposed to return for this upcoming season, but they, like, dropped out last second. Like, they were one of the mystery robots. Like, I would love to see that design, but, like, you know, more practical. Like, I feel like if Sidewinder had armor that wasn't, like, you know, bad, because they got a, like, bad batch of metal for their Yeah, that's what I heard fight with about Scorpios. their fight with Scorpios. Yeah, like, if they hadn't gotten that, I feel like Sidewinder could legitimately be a contender, because, like, you know, they could, like, drive around, like, push people around with the wedge, and then, you know, kind of s- turn and slide underneath with that spinner. Like, I feel like that could be really effective if they could have like a plus driving and be together really well oh yeah now as you saw what that thing did to p1 that horizontal spinner is Mm. no joke yeah and the new one looked really good too because um they showed them to supporters back in like february or whatever they initially released in it the new p uh not p1 sidewinder looked really great i gotta agree with that and so then we got thor on the other side I got to say, I think Thor would be an excellent match for Sidewinder. Now, Thor is quite durable, and that axe Mm -hmm. is quite powerful. Of course, though, Matilda and then Magnetar as well exposed that Thor's CO2 tank is relatively exposed. And And Gushin, too. Yes. Oh, yes, that, too. And Sidewinder could definitely take advantage of that if they managed to get all the way up there. But still, that'll be a heck of a challenge for them. Probably yeah, how I imagine. I feel like it. Oh, you go ahead. Sorry. I I feel like it comes down to: Are we talking about the Sidewinder that competed in season five with the bad batch of metal, or are we talking about if Sidewinder had like good armor and was more reliable? I'd pretty much say like last season, pretty much like their performance and that. So that would probably be the bad batch of metal thing but of course they didn't show signs of that in their first fight but Mm -hmm. yeah all right so how i think this fight might go is one thing you might notice on sidewinder right in the horizontal spinner area that thing looks very exposed there if Thor managed could, to get their get that, axe in, the, if Thor managed to get their axe in there, they could easily take out a weapon chain like what you just said. And mm-hmm. I think Sidewinder would have a very hard time winning this fight. 
if they lose that weapon because Jason, the driver of Thor, is a very good driver. That bot is very low to the ground as we saw it get underneath their opponents quite easily in majority of their fights. Mm -hmm. Anything else you would like to say? This weapon is really good for um, horizontal spinners too. Like it's got a good wedge for it. Oh yeah. Anything else you would like to say or should we put this fight to a vote? I definitely agree with you. I feel like he could easily snipe the chain and I feel like the wedge being the shape it is, I feel like Sidewinder would have a pretty rough time in this fight. Although I feel like an, a new improved Sidewinder could fare much better. I, I could I definitely agree with that as the new Sidewinder looked quite awesome. And I imagine it would, it would show major potential knowing what we saw out of them last season, even though they did get destroyed by Scorpios. I imagine we could see yeah. big things from Sidewinder from that new design. So now let's put this to a vote. What's your vote? I'm going to go with Thor on this one. He's a really good driver, and I just feel like it's a more clocked-in machine because Thor is a pretty old machine. They were in the original run of Robot Wars, were they not? Yeah, they were. I want to so say Series 7. I know yeah, they were in yeah. Series so 7. The were they in Series 6 as well? I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, I don't know Robot Wars ultra well, but I know Thor is definitely like a big name, and I feel like they competed with Thor, but like a different version in King of Bots too, but I don't know the King of Bots lore too well, but I'm pretty sure he was there with like a similar hammer bot and I want to say oh, he yeah. did decently. Thor is, Thor is one of the Robot Wars legends that aged very well as it performed yeah. quite well in the Robot Wars, the original seven series. It performed very well in eight through 10. And I will also agree with you. My vote will be Thor as well. Definitely. All right, let's go to the third fight in the fight card. We got Blacksmith against one competitor we saw in last Thursday's episode, Smee. And I got to say, I don't know what you would think about this, but I think Blacksmith and Smee are like difficult opponents for each other. Now, as mm -hmm. Black blacksmith i imagine they're going to want to go for one of the control areas whether it's the left or the right side but the middle i think blacksmith would kind of have a hard time striking that with their hammer and then yeah got... i feel like they wouldn't be able to hit it like there wouldn't be much they could do because from what i hear that wedge is like six inches thick or something so like you couldn't really damage that like in a, a spoiler alert to the fight with Shark Sharko, like all Sharko could do to it really was just rip off like the stickers on it. Yeah. And then we got Smee on the other side and kind of like a spoiler alert from their fight with Sharko. Those spinners looked very durable, but they didn't seem like they had a lot of power to it. And one of the most durable bots in BattleBots history is Blacksmith for sure. Mm -hmm. And I imagine Blacksmith's durability would give Smee a very hard time. Yeah, I don't see those spinners damaging Blacksmith. Like, they barely damage Sharko. Like, you could see some scratches on him, but, like, yeah, I they feel damage like part of the, Blacksmith, they damage part of one of the wheels as well. Yeah, yeah, and, like, but uh, I don't see yeah. them doing that to Blacksmith at all. Like, Blacksmith is way too tanky for that, I feel. Yeah. How I imagine this fight might go is I bet Blacksmith would come in with the forks, kind of like what they did with majority of their fights from seasons three and four. And those forks are quite low. I imagine they could get a bunch of big pushes in there on Smee if they come at them from the right angle where Smee can't use those two horizontal spinners. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like that's probably the direction that they would go. I think it just really comes down to who wins in the pushing match? Agreed. So now, you got anything else you want to say, or should we put this fight to a vote? I'd say put it to a vote, because I feel like it would be kind of like the Sharko fight, but with like more fire, pretty much. And I Agreed. feel like Blacksmith could push a little better than Sharko. So your vote will be Blacksmith? I'm going to say Blacksmith, yeah. I'm going to agree with that. I'm going to go Blacksmith in a judge's decision. I feel like Smee Finally will get some points and get some hits in there with the spinners, but I think Blacksmith is still going to win it. Yeah, definitely. And plus the fire could, because I'm pretty sure the wedge is like plastic, like the kind of plastic that um, huge wheels are made out of. 
so I mean, there's also the possibility that the fire could damage that a little bit. That is possible too. Of course, though, we don't want to count out SME as I did vote against them um, or predict against them and their fight with Sharko and they won that fight. I know you do. So. so yeah, would not want to count them out. Oh but yeah, they impressed me. Agreed. So now next up, we got TR2 and Ziggo. Before I get to this one, I want to let you know that I want to let everybody know that with bots that are under and over 250 pounds, we're going to scale them right to 250 pounds. As while it would be fun to see how high TR2 can send Ziggo flying, it would be unfair for a lightweight like Ziggo to go against a heavyweight like TR2. Absolutely. Yeah. I. So basically, it's kind of like Gigabyte in a way. Yeah. Reasonably like Gigabyte. They do have a self-writing stick there, which I imagine would give TR2 kind of like a hard time, along with the power of that yeah. spinner, too. As we saw, lot, we saw lots of damage that thing caused, along with winning two seasons of Balbots Comedy Central. Yep, and uh, uh, Long Beach 99 at one as well. Oh, that one as well. Forgot about that. Yeah, Ziggo is a legend for sure. Oh, and, and pretty much every loss it's had, like ex aside from Code Black, which like annihilated its wheels, like its other losses were like DOS Bot. It got stuck under a spike strip, and Salad, like Salad, hit it. It Salad basically pulled a duck on it and just like hit it, and Salad survived, and Ziggo didn't. So yeah, like, I think I think his losses aren't exactly like. I want to say Alpha one. Raptor did the same thing in the first season of Comedy Central, but I don't completely remember. That was Dospot. Ah, yeah. Yeah, it, um, the Dospot pretty much hit him, and then he got, like, crammed under the spike strip. I, apparently, they had to use, like, a crowbar to get him out and stuff. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so then we got TR2 on the other side. That is a very well-driven bot, as we saw it get third place in Series 8 of Robot Wars. Unfortunately, we did not get to see it return to Series 9 and 10, which I was a little sad about that, as I thought that bot showed major potential. Pretty much their driver is like the Matty Vazquez of Robot Wars, if that's the best way to describe it. Very, very good at it. Yeah, I agree. And including it's very durable, as it took out Carbide that year as well. Didn't eliminate Carbide from the tournament, as we did see them get to the grand final well, mm. bite but yeah tr2 took out a big name that year so tr2 is definitely a force to be reckoned with yeah i feel like the, the design of the wedge and the fact that tr tr2 has like a lot of good driving skill behind it i feel like ziggo would have a really hard time like getting around it because if it hits that wedge it's just going to go flying up you know especially if it hits the flipper and I feel like Ziggo would have a really rough time unless it somehow got to, like, the back of him. Agreed. And that was not an easy task because I don't think anybody got to the back side of TR2. Yeah, so I feel like I would definitely lean on TR2 for this one. Yeah. My vote will probably also be TR2. I imagine Ziggo's going to get a bunch of big hits in there, but I feel like TR2 would eventually get Ziggo out of the arena if we're talking like the Battle Box or something like that. Yeah. Or the Pit if definitely. we're talking the Robot Wars arena, whichever one. Yeah, I feel like it would definitely eventually end up in Ziggo either like taking too much abuse from himself from trying to hit TR2 or get knocked out of the arena. That as well. All right, let's go to the fifth fight of this fight card. We got Axolotl, a bot we have not seen yet in BattleBots. I am looking forward to that thing as well, as that drum spinner looks like it could cause a lot of pain. Their opponent mm -hmm. is Monsoon, one of the international teams I was most looking forward to, but sadly we will not get to see them this year. Monsoon, they released their they released their new design and showed off a lot of the improvements they made. And I think it would be very I think it would be a very effective machine. And I think they would turn around what happened in season four compared to this one. Agreed. Yeah, Monsoon. I love Monsoon. Like when he got, when he had his like really good run in season three, I was just really excited because Monsoon is just such a 
a cool robot team is really fun and i'm definitely looking forward to seeing them come back whenever they're able to oh yeah tom brewster and, and including tim rackley is gonna be back too both of them are a lot of fun yeah the axolotl guys are nice too i've been i interacted with them a little bit on discord and uh they're all super nice and they're all super into it i definitely appreciate them and i'm looking forward to seeing axolotl fight yeah I contributed a little bit to their GoFundMe to help yeah. them out complete the design. It's, that was a last minute design they built, but I still think it will do reasonably well in BattleBots, even though we haven't seen a fight out of it. It looks good, yeah. And it, the, the spinner looks like it has some good bite to it. I gotta agree with that. All right, so how do you think this fight would go? I feel like monsoon would probably get way more hits in just because its spinner has a lot more reach to it because axolotl ha looks like it has a good spinner but like monsoon yeah, I think has that's like the config three times the reach but i think they have a configuration which is that in the image right there that allows them to get really low to the ground for spinners yeah. like axolotl yeah definitely so i feel like monsoon would probably take it but I don't want to count on actual auto because you know I haven't seen it in action yet and it does look like it has a lot of potential agreed yeah which is the reason why I haven't set up the point system yet because lots of the newcomers to battle bots and including lots of the veterans that are in this tournament we haven't seen yet so we don't know how well they could do whether they win battle bots or or yeah you get yeah, what I mean totally. by that yeah so if if I took a guess on how this fight would go, one thing I do watch is Axolotl's exposed wheels, even though they do have Omni wheels there, like what Sawblaze had when Monsoon and Sawblaze fought a few seasons ago. I imagine Monsoon could take some bites out of those, knowing Tom Brewster is mm -hmm. a pretty good driver. Yeah, he is. He, he definitely, I feel like if he could get around it, he could definitely knock off a wheel. Although Axolotl is like a pretty long bot from what I've gathered, like compared comparatively. So it might be hard to get around to the side with how long it is. Oh yeah. So I am probably going to vote Monsoon for this one, but of course I don't want to count out Axolotl because we haven't seen a fight out of it yet. Yeah, I, I agree. That's pretty much where I am with it, too. Yeah, I we haven't seen monsoon, monsoon fight. I We haven't seen the new Monsoon fight either, but we saw lots of tests, yeah. tests out of it, though. Is monsoon is very active on their Facebook account as for that. Yeah, it, it looks wonderful. Agreed. So now we have Bombshell and Lockjaw. Of course, Bombshell can't really get away from Lockjaw here. They fought three times in the past two seasons here, but this time yeah. they are up against the new and evolved Lockjaw, which we saw a fight in last episode. And I imagine Lockjaw's strategy would probably be the same as what it was the past three times they fought try to flip bombshell yeah. over as bombshell has had issues with self-writing at least for mm -hmm. that design you know i'm gonna i'm gonna spit a hot take and people are gonna be mad in the comments but after seeing lockjaw and spite against captain Shredderator and based on their last fight with bombshell i feel like bombshell might be able to wing this one. Oh yeah because bombshell has gotten slower bombshell has gotten closer and close well closer between seasons to taking out lockjaw as I think didn't lockjaw lose drive on one well kind of lose drive on one of their wheels and they're meeting with mm -hmm. they're meeting with bombshell last season yeah bombshell did really well in the season 4 encounter with with lockjaw like you know, people will make fun of Bombshell a lot because it kind of fell from grace, but like that machine's still not a joke. And oh, it's, yeah, if the Lockjaw hadn't KO'd it, there, there's a very good chance that I feel like Bombshell would have won that fight. And the way the fight with Captain Shredderator went last night, like, um, Lockjaw, I don't know, maybe it's just TV magic, but Lockjaw felt like it was like slower in that yeah. fight as opposed to it's normal I imagine the shield like, they use the reason why it broke it or at least the reason for why it broke I imagine that shield mm -hmm. is what they use throughout the past few seasons against Valkyrie, Son of Waiachi and Tombstone and those things took some yeah. hits so that could be a possible reason 
what one of my family members noticed, because you were kind of talking about how Lockjaw's weapon was slow, what one of my family mm -hmm. members noticed was that the weapon belt wasn't off, but it was loose, which would explain yeah. why, which would explain why that weapon was able to slowly spin up, but mm -hmm. when but when I, when Captain Shredder air and it would connect, it would immediately stop. Yeah, yeah, like that was definitely. I, I feel like if Captain Shredder Raider had kept spinning in that fight, he probably could have winged it. Yeah, I'm hoping that Donald Hudson fixed that issue for their second fight. Luckily, they still did come out with the win thanks to the pin that Captain Shredder accidentally left as a break yeah. for their spinner. Yeah, I think that was almost luck that Lockjaw won that. So I think if it wasn't much, for yeah. I think if it wasn't for that issue, I think Captain Shredder Air would have taken it. All right, mm -hmm. so let's now put this to a vote. I am going to vote Lockjaw for this one, but only because I think they would probably end it in like one or two hits as they seem to have improved the reliability of their drive that they were having a few issues with last season. But I have a feeling mm -hmm. if they don't end it in like one hit and the, ish the weapon issue we saw in the m recent episode catches up to them, I think Bombshell would yeah. take control of the fight. Yeah, I feel like my vote would definitely be Lockjaw as well, but Bombshell definitely could do it. Oh, yeah, don't count out Bombshell answer. ever just because, like, in the third season, they might have gone winless, but they had some really hard opponents. Like, Lockjaw it was probably the worst possible opponent for their season three design there as yeah. Lockjaw just had to get, simply give them a tap. And then Bronco, Yeti, and Bite Force, all three of those spots are also extremely tough opponents there. So it's yeah. honestly not and a then, bad thing that they put Bombshell in the last chance rumble. Yeah, because, I mean, in his fight, like, fight against Bronco, like, he was pushing Bronco around a bit and, like, cutting up the side and stuff. So it wasn't, like, doing nothing. In the Yeti fight, like, I'll, that, a lot of people consider that one of the most controversial decisions of the season. Yeah, I don't so think close. it was the most controversial decision, but I did find that one controversial. Oh, yeah, my, my, my most controversial is Railgun Max and free shipping always. Yeah, mine would be Brutus and Lockjaw from season two. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a, that one I disagree with as well. Yeah. Yeah, and I also do disagree with Railgun Max and free shipping. But, of course... Railgun Max and Free Shipping both still had pretty good seasons that year, even with what happened. Oh, there. yeah. They're both, both great robots. All right, so now let's get to the bonus fight of this fight card, where we have Nuts 2 and Typhoon 2. Nuts 2, when I showed my family Robot Wars, my dad was assuming in Nuts 2's heat in Series 10 that they would be out within two fights. No, they made the top four of Robot Wars Series 10. That bot, which everybody yeah. thought was a joke bot, managed to punch its ticket to the top four of Robot Wars that year. I'm and then they're it too. I didn't think it would make it that far. Yeah, same here. After watching them get tossed out of the arena quite quickly in Series 9 by Matilda, I wasn't sure how well they were going to do, but then course those flails actually did damage in series 10 now as it took out yeah, those things are beastly yeah it took out andro androne uh 4000 i think i said that right they t it took out their yeah, yeah. crusher it punctured concussions wheels uh took out mm -hmm. carbide's weapon chain which it's most famous for that, that and, was an insane hit yeah, and one of my family members' favorite moments of Robot Wars Series 10 was when the mini-bot hit the pit button and it fell right as Behemoth was right on top of it. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't happy about that. Yeah. So now they are up against Typhoon 2, the Robot Wars Series 7 champion, even though I do think that decision was controversial too. But Typhoon 2 is still a great bot. Mm -hmm. as that is a hard full-body spinner to defeat and including in Robot Arena 2, it can be a challenge at times to control. But, of course, oh, the yeah. team that runs that didn't seem to have that problem. Yeah, Typhoon 2 is a pretty powerful robot. I, I definitely think Storm should have won that final, but, you know, I mean, it happened, like, 15 years ago, so whatever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, and then we saw some fun fights out of Storm 2 in Series 8 of Robot Wars. Yeah, yeah, it was just a roller coaster of a ride with Storm 2. Agreed. All right, so how do you think this fight might go if we saw Nuts 2 and Typhoon 2 actually fight in the arena? This is a really hard one. To, it's like the hardest one to predict, I feel. Yeah, I know. I have no clue. Like, it could go either way. I The thing is, I don't know how thick Typhoon 2's, like, spinner is. Yeah, because I don't think we saw it go up against many other spinner bots that year. I don't recall many of the other opponents they went up against. Well, Exterminator 2, they, or Exterminator, they went up against them and their vertical yeah. spinner. I feel and, like yeah, they held up very Typhoon well to 2, that spinner. Yeah, I feel like Typhoon Two could probably do because I feel like those flails would just like deflect off since it's like a sort of sloped sort of uh, spinner. Yeah, I see those. Their teeth are on the bottom of the bot, and I think that would, while that might, while that might not be an issue for at least the main bot for Nuts Two, I think Typhoon Two would chew up the mini bots quite easily. That Nuts Two would use to try to get underneath Typhoon Two. Yeah, I feel like also um, it would probably be good at chewing up like the bottom halves of the wheels as they were going. That as well. Yeah, because I imagine if they could if they could stop Nuts 2's flail spinner and have their spinner going at full speed, they could easily do a bunch of serious damage to those tires, like what we've seen mm-hmm. Carbide do the multiple times we saw them take on Nuts 2. Yeah, yeah, I feel like it would be sort of like that, pretty much. All right, so anything else you want to say, or should we put this one to a vote? I'd say we put it to a vote. I, I vote Typhoon 2. Yeah, I'm going to vote Typhoon 2 as well, but we would not want to count out Nuts 2 either as that was one bot that a lot of us, that was one bot that surprised us, including their captain. Their captain was not expecting yeah, they just, to get where they got. Shot. Yeah, I imagine we could see a surprise out of Nuts 2 if these two fought. But yeah, my vote will be Typhoon 2. Agreed. All right, now let's get to the main event, the first one. So all eight fights, basically, for each bot, they were randomly determined through a random team generator I found on the internet. And mm-hmm. and when I got to the first wave of matchups, I saw this one, and this one had to be the first main event. I would love Definitely. to see a matchup between these two bots. We did see these two teams fight one. last season, but Carbide... Instead of Carbide, it was Cobalt. And we saw mm-hmm. Minotaur we saw Minotaur win that fight by a judge's decision, but it was a very close one. It was a good fight, yeah. One of the best oh, yeah. fights. Of the My season, favorite too. fight of the season. Yeah. It was up there for me. So so we Minotaur definitely has that new drum spinner and it was very effective after they got to the Desperado tournament when we saw it against Endgame as we saw that thing annihilate Endgame Shatter kind of annihilate Cobalt Hydra as well and land a bunch of big hits Mm -hmm. on Death Roll I'm very curious how that thing would do against a horizontal spinner though because we saw we saw them use a drum spinner similar to it against Gigabyte but it didn't really work if they had that working drum yeah. spinner going, I wonder how that would have fared in that fight against Gigabyte. Yeah, I feel like Minotaur could probably take Carbide, I feel like. Because Carbide is definitely a deadly robot, but like I feel like a lot of people compare it to Tombstone, but like I feel like Tombstone has more more like a hit with it with its yeah. spinner. Carbot is definitely as reliable as Tombstone as other than Nuts 2 taking out its weapon chain, nobody could really take out Carbide Spinner. We saw it temporarily get yeah. disabled in the championship fight of Series 10 against Eruption, but during that season, nobody could really, like, that weapon just did not stop spinning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I also worry that, like, it might not have as much, like, bite to it as, as like, a yeah. Tombstone weapon. Like, it's definitely, definitely got a lot of power weapon. to it, but I got to agree that I think Tombstone has the more powerful spinner. Of course, I don't know for sure, but... Yeah, it's hard to say because they're both yeah. really wonderful and 
the only way we can really find out, I feel, is if they fought one day, which would be a really cool fight to have. Oh, yeah. No doubt about that. Two incredibly reliable spinners. There's just constantly going weapon on weapon on each other. I imagine what Tombstone would probably do if that happened would be adjust their spinner, try to hit the weapon chain. But, yeah, it would still be a very yeah. exciting fight to see. That'd including, really good, yeah. yeah. Then, of course, these two both have incredibly good drivers as well. Mm-hmm. As Daniel Freitas is one of the best drive, yeah, one of the best drivers in the sports. Carbide has a really good driver as well. I forget his name. But it's like David something. Sorry, I'm Dave Moltz is the stuff, captain, so I but I think yeah, he Dave runs. Moltz. I think he runs the. I think he runs the weapon, but I am not 100. Oh, the sure other guy that. is a driver. Yeah. Well, whoever is driving is doing. Yeah does a really good job either way though they do a terrific job running that bot we've seen lots of entertaining fights at a carbide as well as minotaur yeah agreed for sure but i feel like minotaur would probably take it though i am actually gonna make that barely if that's it's not gonna be your vote uh maybe Yeah, if you if you choose to go with Minotaur, I'm going to make it split. I'm actually going to pick Carbide for this one. But I think it will be a very close one, and I imagine we would see that one yeah. at a judge's decision there. Yeah, I feel like I feel like a split is a good idea because that will give people an opportunity to discuss this because that's yeah. a really intense matchup, and that could really go either way. All right, so to everybody that is watching this one, Carbide and Minotaur is a split decision right now as Porinog is going with Minotaur. I am going with Carbide. Be sure to drop a comment in there for who you think would win that fight and so on. So you got anything else you would like to say? No, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. Yeah. I feel like that would be a fun fight and I would love to see it happen for real one day. I don't know if Carbide's like, Oh, I retired because Robot Wars doesn't exist anymore or not. But yeah. It would just be really cool, even if it's just like an exhibition sort of thing. Yeah, I would love to see Robot Wars return as it was an awesome series. It's, it's a lot different from ba- it's a lot different from BattleBots and there are a lot of entertaining machines in Robot Wars. Yeah. Like I want them to just like coexist with each other. That would be perfect. Yeah, that would be awesome. Now as we saw Apollo, oh, they were they were going to try to bring a new they were going to try to bring a flipper bot to battle bots but unfortunately dropped out due to covid yeah hopefully hopefully they'll be able to um next time around cuz yeah, i, I want to really see hope they would come back Ryan. yeah i would love to see a british flipper bot come whether it's like eruption or apollo or a bot run by either of those teams as both yeah. all of those contenders are great even even Ripper would be a lot of fun. They were supposed to come too. Oh yeah, you're not wrong about that. Yeah, that would be a fun fight to see like Ripper fight someone from Battlebots. Agreed. All right, so I believe we have come to the end of talking about this fight card. So the plan is is that next Wednesday, the fight card will get posted both on my Instagram and on the Battlebots Facebook group. And you're, you guys get to vote, whether it is by commenting, whether it's by voting on the polls on my Instagram, whatever it is, feel free to share your vote, who you think would win those fights, as I plan on counting all of them. All right. Thank you for watching this episode, and I hope you will join us at the next talk show episode. Yeah, thank you for coming. Hello, everybody, once again, and I forgot to mention something at the beginning of this talk show. If you would like to get involved in one of these talk show episodes as a guest or co-host like Porinog was, feel free to message me, preferably through my Instagram account. My Insta is in the green square, as said before, but there are methods of other methods of communication with me as well, if that's not possible. Like, for example, you could just reply in the comments and I can happily try to work something out with you and get in contact with you. Feel free to message me even if there is a specific competitor that's in the tournament as I will happily work something out with you. I will let you know the next fight card they are in and yeah, I will happily get you on the talk show for that week. 
I love the idea of bringing others onto this, whether you are a fan or if you are a builder, as it's always fun to hear other people's opinions about the fight that are in the fight card. Lots of you are possibly are probably more knowledgeable than me on some competitors or your opinions on the bots in general or something else. Either way, I love to hear it. My one rule is whether you are a viewer or a co-host on here, please be respectful of our opinions as I bet that you probably did not agree with everything that Pori and I said during this. I don't care if you comment below that you disagree with something, but please don't criticize us as we are trying our best here. The last thing I have to say is that I don't know for sure how long I will be doing these though, as while I am on winter break right now, college does keep me busy. I plan to do as many of these as I can, but if college starts to get in the way, I will probably stop doing these at least temporarily. This is a long tournament, so there is a chance I might choose to start doing more later into the tournament. That is all I have to say here, so if you haven't already, be sure to reply who you think would win between Carbide and Minotaur to help break Pori and I's tie for that fight. And also, when I release this fight card this upcoming Wednesday, be sure to vote in it somehow, whether it's through the polls on my Instagram account or commenting through my posts on Instagram, or I will be posting this in the Facebook BattleBots group. So be sure to reply through that too, is that's another option.